Evening, Gasheads. Welcome back to another episode. Welcome back to episode 26 of the Talking Gas podcast. Apologies for the little delay. Was just sorting a few things out. But yeah, welcome back. Hope everyone is doing well on this Thursday evening or whatever time you're watching this back. Of course, as always, don't forget to leave a like on the stream. Always does help out if we can get 50 likes, as always. If not more, that would be class. Do subscribe if you're new as well. Only less than 400 away from 7,000, which is class. So, And yeah, if you're watching back on the replay, do leave any comments or questions. Of course, if you're watching live, then get all your questions and thoughts in, in the chat. We're going to be joined by uh, Jake as well. He was on last time, if you can remember, when we done the Derby preview when we faced him away under Mangan. So he's going to be coming back on to yeah, give us some insight and in his thoughts on the season so far with us in Derby. Um, but yeah, plenty of stuff to get into. Um, of course, we're going to go over the last couple of games because, because um, we've missed the last few weeks. I was quite ill last week. Just recovered, actually. So, yeah, feeling a lot better. But then the week before, my laptop was playing right up. So I had to get that fixed. But, yeah, joined by Neil as always. Neil, uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, like I said, yeah. It feels weird. It feels like I've just been away on holiday or something just because we haven't done it for a few weeks. But, yeah, of course, Rovers um, winning back-to-back -back games. Uh, before we get into those, I want to get your thoughts on... Obviously, the George Friend situation. He, you know, we signed him in the summer on a on a year deal. He's now um, going to be, um, yeah, you know, working behind the scenes. What's your thoughts on that uh, situation? And of course, we've, you know, of course, we've brought in some people for recruitment as well. Um, yeah, what's your thoughts on all that? It was a. Yeah, it was a weird one that come about for really when you look at it, considering what's George Friend 36, his yeah. first, and that's going to be his first role like off the pitch. Yeah. Um, but I expect when the when the year when the year deal was signed, there was something in there to say, look, I've got no intention of doing anything else after a year. Like my body is what it is, <clears throat> and I want to get into some sort of pathway of working behind the scenes at the football club whether it be here or elsewhere. And there was probably something in place for him, um, penciled in. But this is sort of fell in his lap because it's been needed for a while. We've needed it as a football club for a while, just don't, especially since sort of Jennings left the building. Yeah. We've sort of been, you know, like I said, there's a, a few things regarding the football club. We're pissing the wind a little bit. We don't, we don't have really no, no direction regarding it. So he's got something there that can he can grab hold of and make his own. He's probably... He's probably put his hand up and gone. Do you know what? I've seen an opening here, and I'll and I'll make this work for you. He's probably put something together. He's probably presented something to say. Look, this is how long I've been in the game. These are the contacts I've got. And if you look at if you look at George Friend as a fella, it's a smart bloke. Do you know what I mean? Like he's got a lot yeah. of academic background to, to him. And he and he, I know it's his first job, but he's probably pretty well clued up, and he's 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 um, well versed in what he needs to do in that role. Yeah. So um, I don't think it's as simple as Oh, George wants it. We'll give it George. I think there was probably it's probably gone a bit deeper than that. Um, but it is a strange one for someone at thirty six to get that that role. But ultimately, he's been around the club. He knows what the sort of Taylor setup looks like. What he wants, what direction he wants it to go in. Taylor's comfortable with him, and he's he look he looks like he's obviously talked and spoke his way into getting that gig. So um, good luck to him. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Like you said, it's it's quite annoying that he's had to retire because you know we knew when there was caution, you know, when he signed because of the the last two years, I think he's not really been playing a lot when he was at Birmingham. Um, but then you know, yeah, it's it's kind of frustrating because when he has played, he's been quality. I can't think of a bad game, but like you said, it's just those, you know, he he come back. I think there was a run he had in the team. I think it was Red in away, Carlisle. Derby, he played in was really good. Uh, when we played, he, he played left of uh, three at the back, but yeah, it's just frustrating. But yeah, hopefully, like you said, he's been he's played pretty much every league, you know, he's worked his way up. I think he's played in, yeah, League Two, League One, he's championship most of his career. He's captained Middlesbrough in the Premier League. Um, I think it was what 2016 17 around then, but um, yeah, hopefully, he can do well. And like you said, it's sort of good to see, um, you know, we're not obviously going to, it's looking good, you know, 
from the outside of, you know, we're sorting, you know, like you said, with Eddie Jennings leaving and and now we've, yeah, we've getting people in. I think Adam Mahoney's come back to the club and in, into a role as well. And yeah, it's all looking good. Um, you know, the the other thing I wanted to ask you, and I would have asked it last week, but obviously we didn't do one, was, you know, we've heard different things from the owner. He's done a few interviews on TV, et cetera. Obviously it was on the interview, the last interview we've done is on the YouTube channel if you haven't already checked it out. But I just want to get your thoughts because before the game, that interview come out on the radio about him saying we we want a young squad. Um, but then Taylor was asked, Taylor was asked in the interview after the Carlisle game, oh, you know, there's been, you know, people saying, oh, you know, you need a young squad. And Taylor's like, what? Who said that? And then the, the whoever asked him was like, oh, the owner. And Taylor was like, what? Didn't have a clue. So like, even that bit, like, you see that, you know, obviously the fan forum, there was, you know, good news coming out of it to people who went and they were saying, but then you look at that and you're still thinking it's a bit, all a bit weird at the moment. And you, you want to believe and, you know, you see the good things coming out, but then when you see stuff like that, it's a bit like, like what's going on in it? What's your thoughts on that? When it, when you've seen that and it's just all a bit, it's all a bit rovers in it really, especially with the sort of new ownership that we haven't really, seen them a lot we've seen certain interviews but then he comes out and says something like that when taylor don't even know yeah i don't think to be honest i don't, I don't think i don't think the owners i don't think he's covered himself in glory whenever he spoke to be honest um he says he says you can tell he's saying a lot of stuff that people want to hear do you know what i mean he's he, he wants to be the ultimate salesman he wants to sell us the dream doesn't he like and yes yeah. What every owner would do you know what I mean he wants to sell us the dream I've walked through the door and I'm going to give you this that and the other we're going to work towards being this we're going to get here and we're going to achieve this and this is how we're going to do it but Taylor's obviously the man who looks after this side and he's going to be a bit more pragmatic about it mm-hmm. and he's going to go about it and go well do you know what filling this side full of kids is not the way to go to get us anywhere do you know what I mean you need a, you yeah. need a sprinkling of a bit of everything so the owners you know come out and said what he said and he wants to he wants to sell fans the ultimate dream and he wants to you know make everything rosy and positive and what the future is going to look like whereas you know taylor's probably come out and gone you know i'm, I'm looking at this game to game at the minute we'll get to the summer we'll reevaluate and put ple- put things in place there it might it might require youth it might require people in their prime it might require a bit of experience but that's yet to get pieced together and like george friend be part of that conversation now as well but the owner's just blurted out some stuff that he thinks people want to hear. That's all that's all I yeah. get from that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can completely agree to be honest. Yeah, even into uh, as well, Chris, we've got Chris tuning in, even in uh Rob, Tom Butler, Patrick Welsh, uh Calvin, FPL, and Fall and Blue. Keep getting if you like we said, if you've got any thoughts, questions, get them in the chat as well. Uh and and Tom Butler saying shame he's he, he ain't gonna play again. Yeah, it is because like I said, he's he, whenever he's played he which hasn't been loads but he's coming and done really well and you see the quality there but like you said his body just can't handle it because of the last couple of seasons where he hasn't played a lot it's the sort of the same with hunt in a way because the last couple of years he hasn't played like 40 mm-hmm. games it's been like 25 so um but obviously we'll, we'll get into that when it comes and yeah uh even into alicia as well also as well if you haven't already i um do join, make sure you join the fan hub. The code is in the description and also in the bottom of the screen going through. You can get, I've got a free can, uh, got the fan hub cider in as well. So if you want to get, there's also match tickets. They've started doing match tickets. So when you get points for doing your lineups, um, you can get points for tickets. There's tickets for Saturday's game. There's, you can get cider, beer, uh, jackets, t-shirts, jumpers. Um, you can check in at grounds, make um, predictions as well. So do join the code. It is at the bottom of the screen and in, in the description as well. And obviously do follow the socials if you haven't already, Insta and Twitter for the pod as well. But yeah, I mean, I just want to get your, we're not going to spend loads of time, but I want to get your thoughts quickly on the Northampton game and then the Carlisle game. Of course, you went to the Northampton game um, where we had no midfield. There was players you know, playing his scrum pegs with the injuries and then, yeah, getting that win when we didn't play amazingly well against Carlisle, but got the job done. What's your quick summary on, on our last two results? 
Um, Northampton wise, from minute one to minute 90, whatever it was, we were never in it. Never in it. Not even at 2 1, we were in it. Like um, Leonard ran it from start to finish for them. Got like, good, nice player. Um, he ran it from, but we we showed all the signs of a side that were fed up and frustrated and irritated, to be honest. Um, there was nothing in, in the form of enthusiasm, any sort of cohesion. There was no waves of us trying to break lines or, or get or even try and um, impact anything Northampton were doing. And Northampton, are, it's not like you don't know what Northampton are. Do you, know what I mean? you don't know what they, it's yeah. not like you're going to get sprung by any surprise by them, you know? And we just, we just went out with a whimper. We just looked like we turned up, looked like a load of lads turned up that had to go to work because they had to rather than because they wanted to. And, um, you know, Wilson had his moment, did his, did his thing that didn't help stuff throughout the day. But ultimately we were never in it, not from minute one till the end. We, we were, we were shite, to be honest, if you want to work in one word, it was a complete and utter waste of time for all parties. People that went, um, and the players that turned up every, it was just a waste of time. It was a non-event for Rovers. We weren't even in it. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, of course, going into Carlisle, we did get the, obviously, um, Conte was back from suspension. Obviously, Evans was still certain. But, yeah, we started the game absolutely appallingly for probably the first 25 minutes, half an hour, we were poor. When I think when they, when Carlisle scored, I thought, oh, here we go. Here we go again. They haven't won for, what, 20-odd games. They'd, I think they'd lost seven of the last seven games. But then, of course, we've we finally seen a, a bit of brilliance from Giovanni Brown with that flick. Um, Martin gets obviously another goal, and then Sinclair obviously goes on to score a winner. What did you make of of that game? Um, personally, I thought it winning that game two one. A lot of a lot of the reaction was getting very excited about absolutely nothing for me. They are a dead team walking, Carlisle. Like I don't, I think them. It's only them in Port Vale that are on par with each other as being they're horrendous, aren't they? They they were yeah. awful, sort of thing. When we went one nil down, when one nil down, we did, didn't we? we went yeah, one yeah, nil one down. down to Australia. Yeah, you know, but they're te- they were terrible. Like, and we've got back, we've got back to one one. And to be fair, Ward's kept us in it at one one. It could have gone right the other yeah, way. Yeah. We could have lost that, that was, game. That save, wasn't it? Was it? Was it huh? in the, just after half time, wasn't it? That yeah, save? yeah. He's yeah. made, he's made, a, he's made a double one, save, maybe two top, yeah, top stops, yeah. and then um, we've managed to sort of I say break down. But they're so bad, Carlo. Yeah. They're terrible. The thing you is, know? we actually then, made them look a little bit better than they were with the chances. That's what they I mean. Had. That's what I mean. It was no real improvement on Northampton. It's just that Carlisle are that much worse. And to be honest, I know the Sinclair goal looks good, but Harry Lewis has to save that. Yeah, he, he should do better. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think, like, yeah, three points is very well. It's all very well and nice, but did we play well? No. Did we beat a good side? No. Do you know what I mean? It was a job that should have, it's a job that should have got done a lot more convincingly than what it was um, against a side that are dead in the water. They are horrendous. Um, so. I wouldn't say it was any improvement on Northampton. We just played a side that was far worse. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Even to uh, Andrew as well. Yeah. Players coming back at the right time. Yeah. It's about time, isn't it? We've had it's really, really frustrating. I've I think you look at you look at some clubs, they've they've not had many injuries. Like you look at Peterborough, they've managed to they've managed to hardly get any injuries throughout the season. I know other clubs have had some, but then you know, I, I think Pompey have sort of, you know, because they've signed so many players, they've sort of, you know, sort of got away with it because they've had a few big players out. But yeah, with us, it's been so frustrating. Within, I've, I'm actually going to put, I'm going to put something up on, on the socials in the next few days of minutes played and and starts and stuff like that. And it's crazy when you when you look at it and, you know, we've seen Jordan Rosser coming back. Hopefully, he can play at least some some involvement before the end of the season. But I think it was a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks. Um, I was looking, I just thought, I'll have a look how long Rossett has been out. And two weeks ago, it was 442 days, which is just madness. And he's obviously coming back. And you've got Ward, Grant Ward, who, you know, last season we signed him. 
he didn't get injured. But then as soon as he picked up a niggle this season, he's been games. And then Maka as well is another one. It's, it's just sort of been in the gutter for him regarding, you know, a lot of people, we talked about him a lot last season regarding, you know, when will we see the best of Maka? And because of, you know, he's not really played much and then he's had the pre-season, but then this season, he's and he's never got injured before this season. He's never been out with any injury at all. And then suddenly, luck just goes, you know, from bad to worse. So, yeah, it's been frustrating. I, I still think, I know it's if, buts and maybes, but I believe if we don't get the injuries we've got, I think we, we, we're, we're in the playoffs. But that's ifs and buts, like you said. We, we still have to, we still should have dealt better with certain aspects of our game and, yeah, players like that. And uh, even into Rob Stavek as well. And yeah, Patrick Wells, 100%. He's, he's done really well. Um, I picked up his, yeah, second clean sheet as well since he'd been here. But yeah, we're getting to the Leighton Orient game. Uh, one change, Evan Evans back from suspension. Um, and also Taylor and Finley back on the bench, which is, of course, massive. Um, went into the game again, sort of playing a 4-4-2, 4-4-1-1. And it was interesting that, um, they come into the game top of the form table since January, top of the league, actually, if you would have started the season in January, how well they've done with a very young squad. Um, but yeah, Rovers go there, pick up our fifth clean sheet of the season. And funny enough, it's our fourth away clean sheet. We've only kept one clean sheet at home in the league, which is appalling. Four away, and we've actually matched now. We're level on away wins and home wins after. And you look, you look at it three or four months ago. We hardly had any away wins, but recently we've been picking up a lot uh, away from home. And for me, that game, I said in my reaction, it reminded me of Carlisle just because of we got the man sent off late on. We had to sort of, you know, um, dig in, but. Thinking back on it, it, it it's all, all also another reminder. It was a bit like Exeter um, for me, the away the away win where um, you know we score a goal from hardly any chances on target. Even that, it was a a Martin with the his comb over touch the ball. People still think now it's an Evans goal, but it did look like Martin. But yeah, we go there, get a win, take four points off Orient. who were doing really well. What was what was your thoughts on the game? Because you wasn't that confident going into the game. I, the only, a few things that I thought going into the game, for one, they've been playing, of course, they played on the Tuesday. We had a, a week's rest and we've, we've, again, all winter above us and we've played a lot better against the better teams and our record against them in the last few games at uh, Brisbane Road is very good. That was our third away win in a row. What did you make of the game? Um, yeah, I didn't think we'd get anything at Orient, to be honest. I, I quite like Wellens and what he does and the way he gets his side. Go. I, I just think he's a, I think he's a good he's a good football man to be honest. Wellens, I yeah. think he's well respected within his playing squad. You know they hang on his words and they play the way he wants. Like they they play the direction and he he can he can very much get a tune out of what he's got there. Um, I thought it was a pretty you know it was a dogged sort of affair. I don't think there was a lot of quality in all of it to be honest. Um, Orient will try Orient. Are, Probably one of the better sides on the eye, to be honest. If you could, if they can, if they can get a stamp on the game, but I think Rovers managed to identify exactly what you know they want to do and just try to disrupt it as much as they could. Um, but they have got some, they have got some nice players, you know. Or in, um, I like Max Sanders. I've liked him for a while. I think he's a really nice, yeah. tidy footballer, to be honest. He suits sort of what Wellens wants to do down to the ground. Um, but I just thought it was a pretty much a dogged display. Do you know what I mean? We've got our goal when we just dug in and tried to manage out the game as best we could because we didn't show any intention of making it too, you know. Um, there's pros and cons to it. At the end of the day, we've we've conceded, what is it, near enough, sort of near enough 20 corners, haven't we, to them or something like that? Yeah, sorry about that. It was mad. Buckling, you know, but we've defended them. So there's a plus on that side. But really, over the course of what you're looking to achieve in a season, if you're looking at next season, we can't be doing that. Can't be going again. Can't be going away from home. Can't be going at home. Can't be doing. Can't be conceding twenty corners and open for the best. I mean, we're thankful that you know, Baggett looks like he's shown up now. He looks like yeah. he's got his feet from underneath him and he's not. He stopped wobbling and he's got to grips with actually. Oh shit! In this league, I'm gonna have to start throwing my body into people to get a bit of respect. No matter how big I am, 
I ain't just going to yeah. win an edit for the sake of winning. I've actually got to impose myself on the game and get to grips with whoever's trying to um, have a bit of physical presence around me. Um, so I thought, oh, no, if you're going to start ticking boxes for positives, Baggett's one of them. He looks like he's improving. Um, and we managed to sort of grit out a game, you know. We've got that level of consistency through um, Conter, who looks like he's he's going to turn out to be one of those that is just going to, you know what you're going to expect from him and he'll deliver. Um, considering a bloke's not played a lot of you know professional football, if you look at his stats, he's not really, I mean, he's run around for Grimsby, what, 30, 20, 30 times of that. Yeah. Um, so, but he looks like he's delivering consistency, which is not what you think you'd get from a kid that's come into our environment with the situation being the situation it is with a lot of players that aren't Taylor's men. Mm-hmm. The squad's a bit higgledy-piggledy with people's agendas, etc. But he looks like he's just coming in and done his business. So that's a positive. Yeah. Taylor keeps, I mean, um, Martin keeps scoring goals, positive. But as yeah. far as, as far as the actual um, getting the ball, moving it, patterns, it's all a bit, we're sort of scrap, we're scrapping through games at the minute. And maybe we're just doing what we need to do to get to where we need to be this season. I ain't got a problem with it. I spoke to you after the, it might have been after the Orient game. I said, I'm bored of it, to be honest, mate. Like this is, I'm just, there's nothing for me to be enthusiastic about at the minute. I'm, I, I watch Rovers, win, lose or draw. It just doesn't matter anymore. It just doesn't matter this season because we'll finish where we finish. We'll be safe as houses. We'll get nowhere. And it's just a, it's just a race to May now to get it all sorted out, get, get the deadwood out of the building, get the people that don't want to be here and out of contract gone and let Taylor go to work on doing what he really wants to do. Because at the minute, he can't do that because he's just treading water with a load of players that are treading water with him, so to speak. They're sort of all tolerating each other and you're never going to see you're not working towards anything because you haven't got the playing staff that you're going to w- work towards until the summer so it's just a race to May for me like we'll talk about Derby if we beat Derby great if we lose to, if we lose to Derby so what if we draw never mind it just doesn't matter anymore mm. yeah yeah but <laughs> Ben just put that in can do you know what it's quite funny actually because I've seen I've actually seen a few pundits and people from that ilk saying talking stuff about Lincoln and and I know that they're, they're on they are on a, a 10 game on beat and run but they're four they're four points above us with it and we've got we've got a game in hand on them and I and I and I know we've talked but for me I sort of said I, I just want to see us just keep keep on improving if we can if we can say go on a three or four game on beat and run and I know that's the only that's the only problem this season We'll get into it in a minute. Jake's waiting. We'll be in with him within two to three minutes. But it's been so frustrating. I think we've had maybe four or five times where we've gone back to back wins, and it's come to the third time, and we've not done it. We still haven't won three in a row all season in the league. We might have done it with like a checker Che trophy game, a league game, then a FA Cup game or something, but we've not won three in a row all season in the league. So for me. I just want us to keep on improving. I think with players coming back, it's definitely helped. I know, I know you. You know, you said, "Oh, you know, it it was scrappy," and you know, um, you know, you don't really want to see a lot of that. But it's about time because Derby and Portsmouth and all these clubs. I've seen a lot of season, and I've seen a lot of Derby's fans thoughts. And why they're up there is that they can go to late late in Orient or whoever not play amazingly well, but just defend. And it's about time that, we've actually yeah, done that. Yeah, but that's great. That's great for Derby because they've got a picture of what they want to do long term. Mm. If we there's no such thing as do us doing what we do this season, we're not carrying any momentum into next season because that playing staff gets turned round all over again. We play a completely different way. Taylor's just doing what he has to do to get through to May to get the points tally to what it is. I don't think what we're looking at now reflects anything of what Taylor wants us to look like. He's just doing what he has to do to get us to May, get the points on the board. We'll finish where we finished. Right, the summer's here. Let's recruit. Let's build what we need to. And we'll start playing a completely different pattern, a different way to get us a bit more success. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I, I just want us to, you know, no matter how we do it, I just want us to sort of even get a little bit of a run just to see some with an improvement. And I think it will happen with players, but I know there's no hunt um because of another injury there's no wilson this weekend but taylor finley coming back um 
think there's only who who's still out. I'm trying to think. Aguilera and Aguilera and Grant Ward should be back next week. Of course, we've got a midweek game Tuesday, so we should we'll be back live on Sunday as well. With um, we'll try and get Nappers on again. Of course, that is our game, and and Fleetwood. We all we know, we know how shocking the 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 first game was, but that's our game in hand on Tuesday against Fleetwood. So we'll be live then. But yeah, overall, just I thought first five ten minutes they were they started off better. I thought we were really good for half an hour before halftime. Played some really good stuff. Um, passing and moving, look, looking quite good. There was that chance from Luke Thomas. I mean, I said I said in the reaction after, I thought he was he was he was good, but he um you know his his work rate was brilliant, but you expect that anyway as a player. But I thought I thought he was better when he went to wing back personally, Thomas. I thought he was really good when he when we went five at the back. Um, but yeah, Sinclair done well. Like I said, I thought Baggett was man of the match. Gordon, it's good because you got got. Don't forget Gordon last year. I thought he was really solid last year. He, he I think he played thirty nine games last season, and I know obviously second half of the season was very frustrating. And I got a fact for you as well. Do you know how many points? Have a guess how many points were away from last season's total of 50 points. Uh 50. Well, it's obviously four points, but 53 points we got last season, and we're four points off that, which is which is mental. I didn't think it was that well, obviously at the time I thought it was that bad, but looking over it, I'm thinking, yeah, it was annoying, but yeah, we're only four points away from what we finished on last year, which is mad. But at the end um, of last year, we we just results didn't matter again, did it? Like it was, it was never a true reflection of anything because, yeah, we weren't playing for anything for such a long period again last season. It's it's sort of gone this way this season as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Yambi Sims even too. If Jed keeps improving, realistically, how long can we keep him for? Well, hopefully, as long as anything, he needs to get the contract tied down. Um, I'm not sure when he's out of contract, but we need to. Give him a contract. Um, he's now the first choice. I don't want. Um, yeah, I think he's done really well. He didn't have. Thing is, with Orient, they had all this possession and stuff, but they only had what two shots that troubled him. They could. It. They almost reminded me. I told you it reminded me of the game, but it also reminded me of Exeter, where they have a lot of the ball. They look good, but you know, final product, they didn't have nothing. Although Orient were having a, a good run and stuff, but. Yeah, Patrick Wells saying a top 10 finish would be brilliant. Yeah, agree. Um, ben saying, I agree with Neil. Yeah, yeah, we will have a lot of new players. So, but yeah, I, I just want to finish the season if, if we can go on a run and or just try not try not to lose games. Because Taylor, since Taylor come in, we've, I think we've only drew one game. That was his opening game against Cheltenham. I think we've won 10 and lost nine. So, um, and again, all of the losses against against teams really that are below us, and we always struggle against. So that needs to change. Um, Chris saying Rovers will not cope with the derby. Um, yeah, Mendes Lang as he run a defence ragged. Didn't didn't we win one in four? Yeah, it was something awful like that. But yeah, we're going to get into derby now. Uh, Jake's been patiently waiting. Um, but yeah, Jake, uh, thanks for, thanks for coming on again. And and how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right, Charlie and Neil. I uh, hope you guys are doing all right as well. Yeah, not bad. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, I've seen, I watched your episode the the other night and, and your one with Chloe as well, which is good. So make sure you go and check out Rams Talk. Uh, subscribe to them on YouTube and they're on all podcast platforms. Really, really good content. But yeah, I mean, I, mean, I just want to get your thoughts to start off. With. What have you what have you made of the season so far? You must be pretty happy, but I think, like me and Neil mentioned earlier on, I think fans are still... Quite frustrated, I would say, um, looking in from the inside. Not all fans, but I think some just just from the style of playing it. But he has, you know, Warner has been getting you results. But especially as of late, you know, obviously Port Vale, you won really comfortably. But the two games before that, which you lost. Um, yeah, yeah. Tell us about your season so far and, and your last um, few games as well. I mean, to be honest, I can't complain too much. We're, we're sat in second place. So, you know, you, you can't moan a lot. But when you, you look at every single game individually, it's a bit of a different situation. I mean, I was listening to you guys talk about the way we play and uh, it's not it's not fantastic. I don't think we ever really 
look that inspiring. I mean, we've got Mendes Lang, who's got the most goals and assists when you put them together with something like 22. Um, yeah. yeah, eight goals, 14 assists, which is ridiculous. And he's been unbelievable. And But again, we've we've not scored that many goals. We don't have many goal scorers in our team. Um, top goal scorer, James Collins, with 13. Uh, our third top goal scorer is Martin Waghorn, who's only just come back from injury and he's been out since about November. So... You know, we, we've not got many goal scorers in the team, but we just tend to keep getting it over the line. We get those scrappy wins. We get those one nils away from home. I mean, there's a couple Port Vale away. We look nowhere and we pop up with a goal right at the end, win it one nil, charting away. We have basically one shot and Mendes yeah. Lang puts it away, goes off injured about five minutes later, but he puts it away and we win one nil. So I, I think the way I'd describe us is pragmatic. I think we're a, a really, really effective side, but at the same time, it can be pretty torturous to watch, especially at home. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. Like you said, he's he, you know, he and 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 the quality of your players as well. Let's not forget, Derby have probably got the biggest budget in the league, um, and I think if it's going to be interesting because I would say as an opposition looking in, if you did go up. I think you would really need to to spend a bit of money and and because if you see a lot of your a lot of your players are like people say you know I was watching Nappers and Jake on Cos vlogs the other night and they were saying about you know Paul Warren loves players over thirty and a lot of your squad are like sort of late twenties early thirties um, and then obviously you've got young. Dust like sprinkle around with Cashin and Max Bird, who's of Max Bird, who, who's off in the summer. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. I mean, let's get your. I want to get your thoughts on the game we played you on early on in the season. That was with Mangan, one of the five or six games he managed. And it, I mean, from my point of view, I was so frustrated, and it, it summed a lot of our performances up this season, um, especially away from home. It reminded me of Oxford away for us, Peterborough away, where I thought we were the better team. We looked really good. We, di we didn't really let you do anything for majority of the game. But then within a within a matter of, what, space of five minutes, you went one that up, I think, through a... We tried to press you high, messed up, Mendes Lang, you know, got in behind and scored. Then we equalised, and I was thinking, wow, we're going to take a point here. And then... Two minutes, maybe not even two minutes later, you got you go at the other end again and score and win. Um, but I, I think it's sort of some sums like Derby up where maybe you might not play well, but you can you can just grind out and get get the result and and sort of yeah, you know, punish us really. What was your thoughts on on that game? Yeah, I mean, you say there you were the better team. And again, most teams that players look like it. You know, we've played team. I mean, we played Port Vale. Port Vale looked like the better side for probably 70 yeah. minutes. But we play our game in phases. We'll have phases where we sit in, we contain, and we try and frustrate you. <laughs> Chloe. Uh, yeah, yeah, we sit yeah. in, we try and frustrate. And yeah, that's that's just the way we play. That's just the way we do it. Um, and again, we let teams into games. We let teams have chances. But most of the time, they don't take them. And we tend to take them later on. And that's exactly what happened in the game against you guys. I thought, again, I thought I was really impressed with Bristol Rose, actually. I thought, you know, obviously, you'd just gone through um, a manager change or I guess half a manager change. Um, yeah. And you look like a really motivated team and you really, really made us work for it. But again, we've just got that magic. You know, Mendes Lang, as I said already, 22 goal involvements this season. He's brilliant. Um, and we just have players that keep stepping up. We don't seem to have this consistent, you know, most teams have a best 11 and they keep their best 11. Derby don't seem to do that. We'll sort of, we'll play a team and it won't work very well. We'll make some changes after 60, 70 minutes. It'll be amazing. We'll win the game. We'll start that team the next game. It'll be rubbish. And we'll make some changes after 60 minutes. And they'll look great. And that just seems to be the way we have players coming in and out. I mean, when I look back at that second goal, um, Tyrese Fauna, who picked up the ball, beat the player down the line, cut it back for Mendes Lang, who, who put it in the back of the net. We've not seen him since. Yeah, he's, he's I don't know where he's gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we've got players that sort of come in and out of, of form, in and out of the team. And we only really have sort of a core of five or six players that always seem to play. So, yeah, I think we're a difficult team to predict, but I was impressed with you guys. And I think it's going to be a really interesting game on Saturday. Yeah. I'm, 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 I mean, I'm hoping we got onto predictions and stuff um, in like sort of 10 minutes or so, but I'm, I'm hoping we can actually finally 
finally get a win against you because it's been this is the fourth game. You've got two two wins and we've got uh we've got a draw. Obviously, last season we we played you when uh Wildsmith was just time wasting. I think Rover's done a TikTok of Wildsmith time wasting like all mm. game, and then obviously McGoldrick, who thank God is n- is not a derby anymore. Obviously, he's left, and it's gonna be interesting. Of course, there's a few signings. Dwight Gale, what, what's been your thoughts on Dwight Gale? 34 now. It seems he's been around for because he's I think he's played from like he played uh National League South, Conference, League Two, League One. Championship, Premier League, and now he's back in League One at 34. Obviously, recently signed with you um, on, on a free because, like you said, Collins is now out for the majority of the season. How's he been for you? Obviously, he got his first goal as well, didn't he, in your last win? Yeah, I've noticed you've missed out in the game last season. You're playing diving for a penalty, but we'll forget that. We'll move on. It's been <laughs> enough time now. It's been enough time. I can move on. I can live with it. Uh, we're going to miss out on the playoffs anyway. It's all right. Um, but yeah, Dwight Gale, I think he's a brilliant player. Um, we, we've seen it already. I mean, he scored, as you said, his first goal at the weekend. He's just smart and he's intelligent. And even when he doesn't get a lot of touches of the ball, he moves teams around with his movement. And we've seen it. We had Collins and, and Collins, again, he's not out for the season, but he'll probably miss the majority. He'll probably be back yeah. for the last two or three games which I know might as well be out of the season but I, I like James Collins but he's he's not got a footballing brain really he's a little bit of a headless chicken at times he's sprinting around trying to win the ball back it's great to see passion but sometimes you need to use your head and Dwight Gale does that so so well I mean he was involved in two of the goals at the weekend he took his goal really well for a little man he's very good in the air and yeah. he just seems to find those spaces and get players involved I think players like Max Bird have benefited already from having Gale in the team because he, they've just got someone to work with now. Whereas, you know, since McGoldrick, I mean, you mentioned him, he was a great player, but I don't think he really fit the system. He, he linked really well with the midfield, but he slowed the game down because he was getting on and he was a slower player. Whereas Gale might be, a you know, close to a similar age, but he's still got a good two or three yards of rapid pace. And yeah. he showed that at the weekend. So, yeah, really, really impressed with him. And, uh, yeah, I think you're going to have your work cut out against him. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be... Yeah, an interesting game. I mean, Neil, what's what's your thoughts? And have you got any questions questions for Jake or just your thoughts on the game and derby season? And also, if if anyone's got any questions for Jake as well, let us know in the comments below or, or leave a leave a comment after if you're watching watching back. Yeah, what's your thoughts, Neil, on derby? Yeah, like I was saying to you before we come on, it's mad that they're, they're the they're the biggest club in the division, and they're they're pretty much going under the radar because of. The manner in which they play and the results they get like if you look at posh they're hitting inside for four and five and there's a lot of noise around them you know derby will be efficient they'll win a game two one it, people expect derby to win nothing's spoken about and they sort of go under the radar um and yet they're sat second um and probably going to get out of this league you know automatically anyway but no one's really speaking about Derby because it's it's pull worn it's not desperately flashy. It's all very efficient, gets the job done. But when when sides go about their business like that, people move on to the next talking point. So, like I said, they're the biggest club in the division and no one's really talking about them because they're just getting on with their work, getting it done without any frills. And um, they'll probably go up and there won't be many headlines about Derby. Or Derby went up, they're meant to go up, but there won't be many highlight reels of them because they're just, you know, chugging along, doing their thing winning games um not by the skin of their teeth but just you know getting a job done and that's very much yeah. Paul Warren it's efficient isn't it no frills yeah. no matter where he's been let's just get it done like and I expect mm-hmm. when they go up they'll be defensively very sound he just needs they just need to put a lot of energy into their final third of working out how they can go about getting on the front foot and getting after sides because really Derby look like a side that will spend 70 minutes to figure a side out and then go right Let's go and let's go and pull the plug on this side. And you know, they brought in Blackett Taylor. I'd be interested in Jake to know how he's fitted in because I know Charlton's a completely different setup and they were they were struggling at the other end, but he looked like um he was like a speedboat without a driver for them. Do you know what I mean? He come up with a bit of brilliance here and there, but it derby, you've got to turn it on every week. Well, it's it's a good point. I mean, he's not fit fit in at all because he's not played. Um, he, he came in and he, he came off the bench a couple of days after signing and Warren said he wasn't fit so he started him at the weekend and then he, he lasted 45 minutes didn't 
really touch the ball whatsoever. Um, and he sort of came back into the team against Port Vale on Saturday. And again, you can see he's got something about him. He sort of plays, I was going to say, um, the way Mbappe does. That's delusional, isn't it? But um, the, the same way, he's sort of on the left. He likes to peel onto his right yeah. and he, he moves it yeah. really quickly. And he'll stand the defender up and he'll wait and he'll wait and he'll wait. And then he'll go, which is very yeah. different to sort of any other player that we have. Um I don't really know where he fits in this team. We we tend to play a back three a lot of the time and uh, he's a winger. He's not a wing back. He definitely isn't a wing back. And he's not really a striker either. So it's a bit strange. I mean, we've had Mendes Lang playing up front for most of the season and he kind of, it, it doesn't suit him, but he gets away with it because he's still big and he's still strong. And when it comes to those physical duels, he'll win the majority. Whereas, you know, Blackett Taylor is not that sort of player. So it'll be interesting to see how he fits in. But that's led to a lot of Derby fans saying, you know, was it a Paul Warren signing? Um, was it, you know, yeah. Derby's recruitment team that, that brought him in instead? Because he's looked really excited. It looked like it's exactly what we need. We were playing a back four with wingers. And then the second he's come in, we've only played a back three. So, you know, it, it's, I, I know what you mean. I think you do need to turn up almost every week. And we've seen it, Tom Barkays, and he's got a good record. But again, a lot of games he seems to go missing. And so he's in and out of the team. So I hopefully he'll make an impact in these last 10 games. But yeah, um, we've not seen anything from him yet. It did seem like a weird one for me because Derby are obviously where they are. They want to get to where they want to get to. And I don't know whether that was, you know, a sign in where you shelled out a, a bit of money. Is that just to get you up? Because as good as he's, as, you know, he's a shining light for Charlton, but that ain't saying much considering what they've done this season. But um, apart from obviously Alfie May, who's, you know, shown up for him. But when you get, I say when, if you get to the championship, like where does that guy fit in? Do you know what I mean, what does he, like, where, where does his career go then? Because he's not a championship player. And you, with all due respect, when Derby get there, they've got to earn the right again once they get into the championship. They're not just going to go, right, that's us, we'll finish 11th easy. They're going to mm. have to slog it out again and, Blackett Taylor ain't made for the, to slog it out. So that, again, it seemed it was a bizarre one. Like, what was a long term picture of that sign in? I don't know, and I guess this is one of the ones where we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. I mean, statistically, mm -hmm. he's our second top goal scorer without scoring a goal for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with eight goals, he's level with Mendes Lang, uh, six assists. He's our fourth top assister. So, you know, from a statistical point of view, and even though he's barely played since January or since December, really, he's still right up there with top goals and assists. So. I don't know whether he will be ready for the championship, but again, it's one of those who we'll have to see. We signed him for a couple of years. Um, we haven't paid in the grand scheme of things a massive amount for him considering his output in the league. So, yeah, I, I, again, I, I genuinely I don't know. I think this is one of those where we've we've really got to wait and see. Um, but yeah, well, maybe just watch. He'll turn up on Saturday, be the best player on the pitch, score about eight, and then we won't see him again for the rest of the season. <laughs> that'd be that'd be typical. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, like you said, I mean, to be fair, I sort of I sort of agree with you, Jay, what you just said. I, I think it's probably to do with the recruitment because he, he definitely, when you look at a Paul Warren signing, whether he's, is he experienced? Um, yes, he is experienced, but not as experienced as usually Paul Warren goes for. But like you said, he, he, he was doing well at Charlton. Um, he sort of found his feet after, I think he moved from... Tramir, because I remember him being at Villa. As he come for the Villa Youth Academy, and I remember he went to Tramir um, for a couple of seasons. Went then went to Charlton. But it's it, when you talk about players like that, it's that's the thing with Derby. Like, I was looking at your your team and your you know your subs. Like when you when you can have Connor Horahan, uh, Waghorn, um, Corey Smith, Kane Wilson on the bench, and you know, like you said, that's that's the thing. Like even. Even Saturday, and it's sort of obviously Rovers haven't got that quality, but it's sort of with both managers where you know Taylor when he's come in, he's he's played. He started off with a back three, and we did look good. We beat um, Pompey at home in a back three. We beat Bolton away. Um, we've got some other good wins in there as well. But then I think it was can't remember what game, but uh, we changed it around four or five games ago to a back four. But again, this weekend. Um, it's, it's going to be interesting because that's the thing with both managers. Um, Richie Wellen said it about us. Like, you don't have a clue what team they're going to play because he's sort of experimenting. And also with our injuries and stuff like now, it's good that we've got a few players back for you. So hopefully we can give you a, you know, a good game. But 
you know, before we do get into like, I'm keep hitting the like button if you haven't already. There's over um, 30 of you in live. Do hit the like button if you haven't already. Do subscribe as well because a lot of people that do watch um, the streams and the videos are not subscribed. So please do subscribe. Um, subscribe to Rams Talk as well. But we did ask you this on before the visit of the other game. But what's the main strengths and weaknesses? If if Roy was a, to get anything out of the game, what would you say? Um, Darby's weaknesses. Oh, Darby's weakness. Um, staying switched on in the last 10. That's uh, one we've struggled with a little bit. Um, we tend to, I'll tell you our big problem. We tend to score early on, and it will usually be from a set piece. One of our eight foot center halves will bury a header in the bottom <laughs> corner, and then we tend to sit back and invite the pressure. Um, it's weird because the Port Vale game is the first time for a while we haven't done that. We did it against Barnsley, we did it against Charlton, and both times it backfired because you just keep giving the ball away, you lose control of the game completely, and the opposition end up getting a bit of momentum and one mistake, and all of a sudden, you know, the game changes completely. Barnsley. They just happen to score a 30 yard screamer and Charlton goalkeeper makes a silly mistake that he doesn't usually make. And all of a sudden the other team are back in the game. So it's I think Derby's concentration uh, and and I guess just negativity when they go a goal ahead. Um, if, if we don't go a goal ahead and it gets later in the game, I'd actually fancy it's probably a lot more um, because if we're not holding on to a lead and we're not sort of hanging on, we tend to be a bit more calm, be a bit more confident. I think maybe possibly the occasion, you know, we're right up at the top of the league. Every point counts. I mean, there's three of us, uh, us, Barnsley and Bolton, all on the same points now. So, you know, we're all sat there sort of hoping the other one slips up and there's got to be a lot of pressure on the players. So if we do go a goal up and the pressure's on, the players will feel it. So, yeah, if you were going to get something out of us, do that. But again, we've got a good record sometimes as well. It's, it's you know, it depends what team turns up on the day. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, Ben said it there. We a lot of games we've been starting poorly. Um, yeah, there's a lot of games. Even like you look at Stevenage away. What when was that? Two weeks ago now. Our time's gone so quick, but horrendous first twenty minutes. Somehow we managed to. Um, Taylor makes a change, goes to a back four, and we win three two away to Stevenage. And not many teams. I mean, even you didn't you didn't you get battered at Stevenage when it like we were up, rubbish at that point. Nil. To be fair. Yeah, three one. Yeah, three one. So, yeah, I mean, ho yeah, hopefully, I mean, like, but like I've also said, we 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 have played a, a lot better um, against teams at the top. I think, you know, Barnsley we've drew and lost against. Obviously, yourselves we lost against. Um, beaten Portsmouth, beaten Stevenage, like I said, beaten Bolton away. But yeah, hopefully we can finally get a win. Um, but I think. You, I think it's you, Peterborough, and Barnsley. We haven't won against in the in the in the top six or seven. Everyone else, Oxford, we won uh, three one at home. So yeah, we took points off a lot of sides, and I think I think a lot of yeah, I think Derby fans would be a little bit iffy with that. I think going because like you said, it's interesting. You've actually got one more point away than you have at home, which because I I thought to be looking at your results because I. For some reason, I, I always watch that Rams TV when they do the debrief. Um, for some reason, obviously not a Derby fan, but I, I like watching it because they, you know, I, you know, the analysis is pretty good. But looking at it, I thought it would be a lot. And looking at your results, I thought there would be quite a big difference because I, whenever I seem to look at you at home, you sort of seem to mess up or draw. Where away, I look at all, a lot of your results and you seem to do quite well. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah, we'll we'll get into lineups now. Uh, as well, get your lineups in in the chat or in the comments if you're watching back, and we'll get to score predictions as well in a minute. Um, I'll go with you, Neil, first. Um, obviously, like we said, no Hunt, no James Wilson suspended and injured, um, and no right back. Although Luca Hall, I don't think is injured, but he just wasn't even in the squad um, for Saturday's game. So, what's what's your lineup for Saturday? For me, it's it's an interesting one to. It's so like you said, do you play Gordon at right back, Harvey Vell at left back? I, I'm not sure. What would what would you do, Neil? I go um, Ward in goal, um, flash at left back. I'd have. I'd like to see. I'd be interested how it goes to see Baggett and Taylor at centre half for the first time, and just see how them two monsters can deal with whatever comes their way. Now Baggett sort of found his feet, and he looks to understand what he has to do to get himself set to win those headers. Um, if 
Derby think they're going to have a pretty, you know, comfortable aerial threat. We should be able to match that now with what we've got there as two centre halves. Um, and I think um, Josh Grant will go in it right back. I just think you have to play Grant now. He's, he's definitely 100% he's going to exercise that extra year. So you might as well play him because he's going to be around. He's not going to go anywhere in the summer. Um, so he, he will be here next season because if you're Josh Grant, why wouldn't you exercise it? You're not going to get two years anywhere with your, you know, injury history. So mm. stay there and get another year's money and try and get yourself fit. Um, so I'd play him because he's going to be around. Um, Finley and Connor to screen Evans in front of him. Thomas one side, Giovanni Brown the other, Chris Martin through the middle. Interesting. So what's that? Four, 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 one, one, pretty much, isn't it? Uh, it all depends yes. what you do and what you don't do without the ball in it. You could say it's a four, two, three, one. You know what I mean? It all matter. It all depends on what you do with and without the ball, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben saying can't stick, can't um, stick Grant right back. He's garbage. Um, Jake, what 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 would be your team again? You, you would you go unchanged after your win, or would you want to see a few changes? It's interesting. Um, so Derby, I mean, Derby lined up in a 3-5-2, um, which, again, it does work well. But we played Tom Barquez in the central midfield, uh, which we wouldn't usually do. So I think it would probably be unchanged, but I'd take Barquez out and we'll probably play the likes of Hurahan or Corey Smith. Um, I think away from home, we want to be more solid, keep it tight with a three in the middle and then keep the two at top to hit you on the break. I, I'd be very surprised if we went as... I guess, attacking with four attackers on the pitch because we need at least eight defenders at all times. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, again, it'll be Wild Smith and goal. Back three of Curtis Nelson, Sonny Bradley, Erin Cashin, which have been quite solid all season. Uh, Louis Sibley, fresh off scoring a brace at the weekend at left wing back, but Joe Ward, who got two assists at right wing back. Again, he's another one, didn't play for about two months and uh, played the last game, got two assists, and now it's like, what a player. Uh, so I'm sure he'll drop a three out of ten because that's what usually happens. Um, midfield three of Ibu Adams holding. He's been unbelievable since he's joined from Cardiff. He's he's a really combative midfielder. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, I think your midfield is going to struggle to keep up with him because uh, we struggle to keep up with him. Um, mm -hmm. Then Conor Hurahan and Max Bird, who should bring a little bit of quality into the middle. And then Dwight Gale and Mendes Lang up top. You've got, uh, two, you know, two experienced players. Both have a little bit of pace. One's big, one's little. You know how that partnership works. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I have a feeling that's how Derby will shape up. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because that remember that two two of Forest Green's uh, lead two winners are now at you. Of course, Adams he was quality for them when Rob Edwards was manager when we when they yeah when they won the league and yeah and then um, Kane Wilson as well who's, who obviously went to City our rival our, our rivals didn't work out but yeah he's, he's quality player and yeah it's an interesting inter it's just the yeah your defense is just so solid in it for this level. What are the three centre backs like? Do you want apart from the three you got? So, yeah. Um, for me, I'm actually going to keep the same formation that we ended at Orient. So three at the back. I just don't with the attackers. Obviously, I I've, I've got every faith in Rovers, but I just know how strong Derby are, like especially attacking attacking wise. Um, I'd stick with um, Warding Goal, of course. Um, I would go Luke Thomas right wing back. Uh, when we were playing the three at the back, Thomas was, I think it was Bolton away. He started Thomas wing back, and everyone was like, "What is going on?" A, a little right right winger at wing back, but he was quality. He was quality. So I'd go uh, Thomas right wing back, left wing back. I would go uh, Lewis Gordon. Three centre backs is where it gets interesting because Wilson suspended. Kramer wasn't even in the squad. Connolly wasn't in the squad. Um, if it was me, I'd probably go Connolly, but Taylor, I think it'll go Kramer. So Kramer, uh, Connor Taylor and Baggett as a centre-back. Um, two centre-mids would be Finley and Conte. And then I would sort of play like two sort of false nine centre-forwards behind Martin. So I would go Evans and Giovanni Brown in behind Chris Martin. And obviously thinking as well, we've got another game on Tuesday, so I'd rest Sinclair, bring him off the bench. He's still, although he's been playing really well, I just think I'd, if you have Harvey Vell, you know, Marquis, um, 
yeah, Sinclair on the bench. I think that's good. So that would be my team um, as well. So, yeah, Tom Butler's gone. Uh, Ward, Grant, Baggett, Taylor, Flash, Finley, Conte, Evans, Sinclair, Brown, Martin. Um, seems to play against better sides and against sides that like to play football. Can see a 1-1 draw, maybe 2-1. Yeah, we'll get into predictions now. All of you get your predictions in. Of course, leave them in the comments after if you're watching back on the replay. Neil, score prediction. Do you think we're going to finally get a win in our fourth meeting against Derby since they've come down? Or do you think we'll draw or lose? I think um, being what Derby are and the way they go about it, I think we'll get edged out, to be honest. I think we'll get edged out 2-1. Um, I don't think... I don't think we'll get torn to pieces. I don't think it will be a a thrilling watch, to be honest. But I think Derby will turn up. They'll be efficient. They'll get their old heads to go and do what they do, um, and they'll they'll just edge us out a little bit. I think um, a little bit of a little bit of quality will shine through. I think um, come the end. Um, I don't think there'll be a lot in it, but I just think that's a, I just see it going that way. So yeah, I think we'll get. I just think we'll get edged out two one. Mm -hmm. uh, goal scorers for both teams. Um, well, it'd be Chris Martin for us. Um, <laughs> yeah, and Dwight Gale and Corey Smith, probably. Corey oh. Smith, he's got one goal in five years. Yeah, Better not be him. <laughs> if you come into the men, he'll score. <laughs> yeah, X, yeah, X shed, isn't he? Yeah, I remember, he, I, me I, me I remember he bottled it in the away. In, in our game this season when he went off injured and everyone was given that was then obviously you go and win so it didn't really um matter but yeah yeah Neil's gone two one uh Jake what's your prediction confident in getting another win or do you think it'd be a bit more difficult? I think it'll be tight regardless but I mean you've said and the comments have said as well you seem to play better against decent sides well you are not prepared for 90 minutes of worn terror ball on Saturday <laughs> it's going to be horrendous viewing we'll score an awful goal and then we'll park the bus and hopefully you won't be able to break us down so I want to go 1-0 uh, I think it's going to be a horrible set piece goal or something along those lines probably Joe Ward's direct free kick it'll be a cross and it'll go in because that seems to be the way we play at the minute now. So, yeah, I think it'll be a really, really tight game. Uh, I've just got to hope that Chris Martin doesn't turn up, because he usually does against us, apart from that one time he missed an open goal on purpose, so we wouldn't go down. So thank you, Chris, for that one still. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, we haven't really got to him, but obviously you've got the that famous, um, you know, shirt with you in the just behind your head. Obviously, he was a quality player. And, yeah, for, to be honest with you, um, there isn't a better finisher in this league than him i'm not mm. he hasn't even been getting loads of chances and he's just he seems to get one a game and he scores like 11 he's got 15 in 25 games in league games that is obviously if you count all competitions it's probably like 29 but in the league 15 goals in 25 games uh 11 in his last 11 he's been he's been killing it so i'm hoping oh, i'd be lovely if he can score again and he gets the win I mean, yeah, for me, um, my prediction is it's got to be it's got to be my famous two-one win, hasn't it? I always go for two-one. Um, I think I think we'll win. I I think looking at Derby, I just I think we can get something. I think with players coming back um, at home, it's been you know if it would have, I'd be a lot lot more confident if if it was like two months ago when we I think we'd only lost like one. But we've we've had a bit of a bad run at home recently, um, against the poor sides, of course. Dar uh, no, um, Burton Albion, Fleetwood, worst performances going. But yeah, I, I'm going to go two one. It's got to be Chris Martin, like Neil said. Who else is going to score? Um, Chris Martin, and I'm going to go for Evans. I think Evans is going to score a free kick because his his goal didn't count last week because Martin got the tiniest of touches. So yeah, I'm going to go two one. Rovers and I think I'll go Dwight Gale. I think I'll go, yeah, I'll go Dwight Gale for Derby. You see, yeah, 2 1 Rovers I've gone for. But yeah, Chris Collier has gone 1 1, Chris Martin and Mendes Lang for them. Alicia's gone 2 1 Rovers. Ben Darrell's gone 2 1 Rovers. Martin and Sinclair last minute. Yeah, it'd be nice. Uh, Sinclair um, 2 2, Martin and Evans says Tom Butler. Gordo 2 1 Gas. 
Martin and Giovanni. Yeah, it'd be nice for Giovanni Brown's... Like, me and Neil talked about him earlier on, you know, the flick. I'm not sure if you've seen the flick he done against Carlisle, that flick over the defender, then he crossed it to Martin. But that was... We haven't really seen much of him um, this season, and he's only got one goal for us in the league, and that was back in October in the 3-0 home win against Port Vale. So it would be nice for him to get another goal. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he's, yeah, Martin's clinical when he gets a chance. Um, Death taxes and Hayner predicting a 2-1. I know, I, I always do. I, I always do predict a, a 2-1. And yeah, yeah, he is to do a goal, to be fair, Giovanni. But yeah, we're pretty much going to end it now. Thanks to everyone that has tuned in. If you, like I said, if you missed anything, you can go back and watch it after. Uh, if you do, leave a like. Do subscribe as well. Like I said, at this, when Jake arrived, subscribe to Rams Talk. Follow them on Twitter at Rams Talk Pod. Um, check them out on all podcast platforms. Um, yeah, thanks to Jake, of course, again. Um, all the best after this game. Um, thanks to Neil, as always. And like I said at the start of the episode, we will be back on Sunday, probably 8 o'clock, but just keep an eye on socials. Hopefully, we'll have Nappers on again as we react to hopefully a... Uh, a nice win against Derby and um, we'll be previewing Fleetwood as well. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks to Jake. Thanks to everyone that's tuned in. Hit the like if you haven't already subscribe and yeah, I'll be back uh, on Saturday with hopefully uh, a positive reaction. Um, so yeah. Cheers, Chin and up the gas.